Alright, hello everybody. We're talking about all things gravitation this morning. We're going to try and answer some questions. For example, how far away would you have to be from the Earth for the gravitational field strength to be zero? And how much work would you have to do? How much energy would you have to use to escape from the Earth's gravitational field? And if you were to throw a ball vertically upwards from the surface of the Earth, how fast would it have to be going for it to escape from the Earth's gravitational field? There's the Earth there. And I've stuck a wee astronaut on the Earth. And that little astronaut will be feeling the force of Earth's gravity just by standing on the surface of the Earth. And the Earth's gravitational field strength at the surface of the planet is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And the reason there is 9.8 newtons per kilogram is because of this equation. This is Newton's law of gravitation, and if we sub in the mass and the radius of the Earth, and 1 kilogram for m2, then we can work out the gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth. In fact, you can work out the gravitational field strength of any mass that's producing a gravitational field at any distance from the centre of the mass. And big G in all these equations is Newton's universal gravitational constant as 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So if we want to work out what the gravitational field strength is on the surface of the Earth, and the symbol for gravitational field strength is a small g, then it will be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth, which is 6 times 10 to the 24, divided by the radius of the Earth squared, and the radius of the Earth 6.4 times 10 to the 6. And that gives you an answer of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That's why g at the surface of the Earth is 9.8, and all that data is available on your data sheet. But what happens to the size of that gravitational field strength as we move away from the Earth? If we were to go to where the International Space Station is, and believe it or not, on this scale with this globe here, the International Space Station is in orbit around the Earth. Well, what do you think? How far away would we have to go to get to the orbit of the International Space Station? Had a guess? Well, believe it or not, the orbit of the International Space Station is 400 kilometres above the surface of the Earth, and on this scale, that's only 9 millimetres above the surface of that globe there. And if you work out what the size of the Earth's gravitational field strength at a distance of 400 kilometres from the surface of the Earth is, then it's only about 8.7 newtons per kilogram. So the International Space Station is certainly still in the pool of the Earth's gravitational field. If we go even further, if we were to go to a geostationary orbit, how far would we have to go for a geostationary orbit? Well, we would have to go about 90 centimetres away. It would be 84 centimetres away on this scale, actually. So, there is about how far away you would have to go from the Earth to be in a geostationary orbit around the Earth. And the gravity, or the gravitational field strength, at that distance is about 0 0.22 newtons per kilogram. And here's the calculation that shows you the gravitational field strength in a geostationary orbit. It'll be big G at 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the geostationary orbit, which is the radius of the Earth, plus the height of 36,000 kilometres. Don't forget to square that, and it gives you your answer of 0.22 newtons per kilogram. So it's getting smaller. As you move away from the Earth, the gravitational field strength decreases and decreases and decreases. The question is though, how far away would you have to go for the Earth's gravitational field strength to be zero? In fact, if we go to the distance of the Moon, on this scale here, the Moon would be about 9 metres away. Now the Moon is about 384,000 kilometres away from the Earth. So I've set it up here, and on this scale, 
the moon is about nine metres away. Do you know some people think we haven't been to the moon? Hmm. Anyway, what size is the pool of gravity of the Earth on the moon at this distance? Well, it's about 0.003 newtons per kilogram. So where would you have to go for the gravitational field strength to fall to zero? Well, let's look at this relationship. As R increases, then G will decrease. So if G and M are constant, then when will the gravitational field strength become zero? Then mathematically, G will only approach zero as R approaches infinity. In fact, this is another example of the inverse square law at work here, where the gravitational force decreases with the square of the distance. And because that gravitational force changes with distance, we can no longer use equations that had a constant force in it. Like work done is force times distance. Well, if that force is changing, we can't use that equation anymore. And similarly, we can't use potential energy equals mgh because the gravitational field strength is changing with distance. So we need to come up with a new set of relationships that can apply to doing work in a changing gravitational field. And for that, we need to introduce the idea of gravitational potential. Not potential energy, gravitational potential. And the symbol for gravitational potential is a V, you've met this before, for electrical potential, voltage. We'll come back to that in Unit 2. But the same symbol is used for gravitational potential. It's a V. It doesn't stand for voltage, but we use a V. This is tricky because, as we've said already, the gravitational force GMM over R squared. The further away you go from the Earth, as R increases, if this increases, then when will the gravitational force of attraction be zero? When will you escape from the Earth's gravitational field? Well, that force will only be zero. That's a constant. That's a constant. That might be a constant. That's increasing. The only time when that will be zero is if R increases to infinity. Now, we've always got problems in physics with zeros and infinities. Because you never actually get to infinity or you never actually get to zero. They're a mathematical construct. So, what we can say though is that as the distance increases, as R increases, then that gravitational force decreases, 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 and tends to zero, as you would say, in maths. So, as you approach infinity, the gravitational force decreases to zero. What we now have to talk about, though, is how much work do you have to do to move an object around in a gravitational field. And we've already said that we've got issues with using, we've got issues with using W equals mg, because g is not constant. We've got issues with using EP equals mgh, because g is not constant. G's changing. In fact, g, as we said last time, the gravitational force, the gravitational field strength is the force per unit mass. So if that mass there was one kilogram, then this equation becomes gm over r squared. And again, if that increases to infinity, then g will decrease to zero. So if G is always changing, the further away you get from the Earth or from the Sun or from an astronomical body, then we can no longer use these. These are only approximations for when you're at the surface of the Earth and you're only moving through a very small change. So, 
how do we define the amount of work that we have to do to move an object in a gravitational field? Well, there's a definition for it, and this is it. Okay? Gravitational potential, and unfortunately this is just one of these definitions where you will need to learn it and remember it. You could be asked to state it in an exam. Anyway, I'll speed this up. There it is. That's the definition of gravitational potential. It's the work done in moving a unit mass, one kilogram, from infinity to a point in a gravitational field. So if we were to take a unit mass, one kilogram, and move it from infinity to a point in that gravitational field, then we would need to do a certain amount of work. Right? Now hold on a minute, you might say, you don't need to do any work to move an object into a gravitational field. Gravity does the work. You're quite right. You would need to do work to move an object out of a gravitational field. Because of that, when you derive the equation, you need to use calculus to do this. When you derive the equation for gravitational potential, it looks like this. Gravitational potential equation is minus gm over r. And there is a negative sign in there. The reason for the negative sign is that the zero of gravitational potential is at infinity. That's pretty tricky. The zero of gravitational potential is at infinity. You've met this before. If you think about this, when we did energy levels in higher physics, when we did energy levels in higher physics, remember we said if you have an atom and then there's an electron, that electron can exist in different energy levels. And then when we drew energy level diagrams, we drew them like this. And although the, the ground state was there and E1 and E2 and so on and so on, then the energy at the very top was zero. We had zero at the top and then as you went down it was increasingly negative as you went down. Okay? So we've met this idea of negative potentials before. In fact, another way of thinking about it is if you imagine we've got a mountain, and then a valley, and then another mountain, and a, there's the sea. There's the sea, there's a mountain, there's a mountain. Where is our zero level? Well, our zero level is sea level. And when you go above sea level, you would increase in height maybe 8,000 metres. When you go below sea level, you go down maybe 2,000 metres, minus 2,000 metres. The zero level is a boundary. It's the boundary between being in the ocean or being out of the ocean. And zero is that reference level, and you measure below that using minus numbers. It becomes more negative as you go down. Well, it's the same with gravitation. When you are outside of the gravitational field, that's the boundary between being out of the gravitational field or in the gravitational field. Zero is at infinity. And therefore, anything in the gravitational field is negative. Another way of thinking about it is to think about a gravitational well. And we'll speak more about that when we do general relativity. But if zero is our reference level, then here's the Earth or a planet or the Sun. When you go into a gravitational field, you are entering a well, and there's our zero level there, zero. The further down you go, the more negative becomes 
as you go into that gravitational well. You have to do a certain amount of work per unit mass, your potential there, you have to do a certain amount of work to get you out of that gravitational well. So the deeper you go into a gravitational field, the more negative your gravitational potential is. It's a tricky concept. It's zero at infinity and it becomes more negative as you approach the Earth. There's the equation. If you want to know where that equation comes from, you would need to do a little bit of calculus and uh, you would need to integrate the force equation with respect to distance. And when you integrate it, you end up with, uh, with that equation. So, this is gravitational potential. That's measured in metres, that's measured in kilograms. Big G, we've said earlier, Big G is measured in oh, Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Okay, and gravitational potential, because it's the work done per unit mass, is measured in joules per kilogram. And we could work out what the gravitational potential is on the surface of the Earth just by putting in the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. In fact, that example is in the PowerPoint. The deeper you are in a gravitational field, then the more negative your gravitational potential is. Potential isn't to do with a particular object. Potential is to do with a location in a gravitational field. It's zero at infinity and it becomes more negative as you get closer to the object that's producing the gravitational field. Very tricky concept. When a mass is in a gravitational field near to a planet then, work must be done by an external force to move it out of the field or away from the planet. And similarly, Gravity will do the work to pull a mass into a gravitational field. This is similar to National 5 when we said that you need to do work to lift a mass vertically and it will gain gravitational potential energy. Remember that EP equals MGH, but that ain't going to work anymore because G small g isn't a constant. So we need a general equation for gravitational potential at any point in a gravitational field. And here's the definition. This is one of these definitions that you could be asked to state in a final exam, and it's just a case then of learning this and being able to uh, write it down if required in an assessment. So gravitational potential is defined as the work done by an external force in moving a unit mass from infinity to a point in a gravitational field. So the closer you are to the Earth, the more work you would have to do to get you out of the Earth's gravitational field. It's a bit like being in a well. The deeper you are in the well, the more work you have to do to get out of the well. But the tricky part is our zero of potential. It's not at the surface of the Earth. It's at infinity, where the gravitational field strength is zero. So this means that all our values of gravitational potential then as we approach the surface of the Earth are negative and you have to do a positive amount of work to get out of the field up to a point where that gravitational potential is zero. You've met this before in higher physics when we did electron energy levels. The ionisation level, the boundary between being inside the atom and outside the atom, that ionisation level is at infinity and all their energy levels are negative underneath that because your top level, your ionisation level, is the zero level. Pretty tricky. So there's our gravitational well and the relationship for gravitational potential is on your relationship sheet. This relationship is derived using a little bit of calculus where you would integrate the gravitational force or the gravitational field strength with respect to distance. 
Anyway, we don't need to derive that. It's given for us on the relationship sheet, where V is the symbol for gravitational potential. It's measured in joules per kilogram, and it refers to a location in a gravitational field, not to an object that's placed in a gravitational field. And from this relationship, you can see that it's only when you get to an infinite distance, when R is infinite, that gravitational potential is zero. And our more mathematical approach would say, as your distance tends to infinity, the gravitational potential tends to zero. A wee example for you was the gravitational potential on the surface of the Earth and the surface of the Moon. And bear in mind that gravitational potential is a maximum negative value when you're at the surface of a planet. And then it becomes less negative as you move away from the planet. So it's a case of subbing in the values for each of them. And to that relationship where M is the mass of the planet and R is the radius of the planet. And if you do that for each of them, you see the gravitational potential at the surface of the Earth is minus 6.3 times 10 to the 7, and on the Moon it's minus 2.9 times 10 to the 6, so it's about 20 times smaller on the Moon than it is on the Earth. So you'd have to do a lot less work to get an object off the surface of the Moon than you would off the surface of the Earth. Gravitational potential energy, on the other hand, is what an object possesses when it's at a location in a gravitational field. And since gravitational potential is the work done per unit mass, then the potential energy of any mass is given by the relationship EP equals minus GMM over R. So all we're really doing is taking the gravitational potential relationship and multiplying it by the mass of a an object that's placed in the field. There's potential energy in joules. The other way of thinking about this, and this relationship's on your relationship sheet as well, is that potential energy is equal to the gravitational potential times the mass of an object placed in the field. And that would be the potential energy of that mass. And potential energy is always negative. If you're in a gravitational field, because the zero is at infinity, then you would need an external force to do work to get the mass from inside the field up to the zero at infinity. As you move away from the Earth, though, your change in gravitational potential energy will always be positive. In other words, a positive amount of work will have to be done to move you up out of the gravitational field, so the potential energy gained will always be positive. Another wee example, this time it's the International Space Station. It's got a mass of 4.2 times 10 to the 5 and it's in the Earth's gravitational field at a height of 400 kilometres above the surface of the Earth. So if we have to determine the gravitational potential energy of the ISS, then all we're doing is subbing in all the data we require. Big M is the mass of the Earth, small m is the mass of the ISS, and R is the distance from the centre of the Earth to the location of the ISS. So we need to add the radius of the Earth and the height above the surface of the Earth to get our total distance. There it is there all subbed in, and when you work that out, you get minus 2.5 times 10 to the 13 joules. It's not negative energy. All that means is that you would need to use 2.5 times 10 to the 13 joules to get the ISS up and out of the Earth's gravitational field to a point where the gravitational field strength is zero. In other words, to escape from the Earth's gravitational field. Well, can an object ever escape from a gravitational field? Well, mathematically, it can. If you give it enough energy so that its total energy is equal to zero at infinity, then it can escape from a gravitational field. A better way of thinking about this is if we consider throwing a ball in the air and asking the question, can we throw a ball with enough initial kinetic energy so that it goes up but it doesn't come back down again?
So if you throw a ball up in the air, it'll come back to your hand. If you throw it faster, then it'll go higher, but still come back to your hand. Now, can we ever then throw a ball up in the air and it doesn't come back down again? In other words, it can escape from the gravitational field. And escape velocity is what we're going to talk about in our next video. See you in the next one.